Can we please rise and welcome His Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibum State. Thank you very much. We remain standing for the National Anthem. seated. Your Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibum State, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. We're seated here in this Executive Council Chambers of His Excellency, the Governor for a very important, a very solemn occasion, and of course for a very solemn reason. And that is the purpose of the valedictory Executive Council session in honor of a son of a Kwaibum state who while he lived, served his state and his country very creditably. In the course of his life, the gentleman served as principal secretary to the then Military Head of State General Yakubu Gawan. He served as President Secretary in the Federal Ministry of Industries and the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. He served as Director General of the Department of Foods, Roads, and Rural Infrastructure, DIFRI, as it was then called. He was also Director General in the Federal Ministry of Social Development, Youth and Sports, and also in the Federal Ministry of Budget and Planning. The reason why we are actually having this session in his honor is that in the course of his service, he was Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State, and of course, a number two in the State Executive Council, as it then was. He also went ahead to serve as Secretary to the Government of the Federation for eight years, and also worked in the Federal Executive Council as Pioneer Minister to Niger Delta Affairs. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we're here to honor the memory and pay our respects to the departed gentleman, Chief Ufot Joseph Ekaite, Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, member of the National Institute, former Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State. And with your permission, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'll proceed to do some introductions. And I'll start by introducing His Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibum State. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a solemn occasion but of course, we can still appreciate us. Please put your hands together for Mr. Udum Imano, Governor of Aquaibum State. We also have here the Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State, Mr. Moses Ekpo. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Let me um, also acknowledge the Secretary to the Aquaibum State Government, Dr. Imano Lekuwem. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. I will at this point take a break and um, acknowledge members of the immediate family of this deceased gentleman, starting with his better half, the former senator, represent, one time senator representative of Kwaibum South Senatorial District, distinguished senator Eme Ekaite. Please, can we encourage her, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. We also want to acknowledge the Presence in our midst in this executive council chambers of the children of the deceased, Udwake Kaite, Madwako, Ubong Ekaite, Jene de Kaite, and all the members of the family. Time would fail us to list them one after the other, but we're happy to have them join us at this occasion. And um, we can also, at this point, give them an applause. Please put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. 
The head of the civil service, commissioners, and special advisors are all here. Distinguished senators have joined us here. Senator Nitiu Kun, Her Excellency Senator Helena Swenner is also here. We also have here with us chairman of boards, commissions, and technical committees, permanent secretaries and heads of extra ministerial departments, the representative of the Com Commissioner of Police, the sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, former secretary to the Kwaibom State Government, Obama One Grace Ekong. We have senior citizens of Kwaibom State. And I think at this point, I should also acknowledge, um, actually not because he should be acknowledged at this time, but because he deserves special recognition at this time. Former military governor of Akwaibom State, the first indigenous military governor of Akwaibom State, it was actually under his leadership that this deceased gentleman served as deputy governor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a Commodore Otweko Idolson Kaha retired. Welcome, of course, Dr. Maurice Sebong. Welcome other senior citizens, former member of the Federal House of Representatives, and a good number of um, ex co members that are here, um, those who have served in the Kwaibom City Executive Council, and also Chief Sonny Jackson, and some other family members and those who have come, including gentlemen of the press. Thank you very much. After those recognitions, I will at this point respectfully request His Excellency the Governor to kindly do well to proceed with the activities of this benedictory exco session. Your Excellency, please. Thank you. Resting on the already established protocol, with due respect to the elder statesman here present, the ESCO is hereby fully constituted. Can I call on Commissioner for Health to give us an opening prayer? Shall we rise, please? Our everlasting Father, we stand before you with reverence. With all humility, Lord, we acknowledge you as the creator and the father of all spirits and flesh. Father, we give you honor, glory, and adoration. We worship you. We stand at this house today in this executive council with our his Excellency, our Governor, to extol your name and to praise you for the great things you have done for our state. Thank you, Father, because today we are honoring one of those you brought through whom this state has earned a lot of accolades and glorification. We thank you for this meeting. We know when we call upon you, O oh God, that you'll be with us in a meeting like this where your name is called. And therefore, Father, we invite your presence that as we hold this meeting, everything that shall be done here will glorify you. And this state shall be blessed. And more and more blessings shall come upon us and the whole of this country. Thank you for your presence because we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Permit me to simply say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special valedictory school session. It's so difficult to hold this session as a chairman in council, but you don't have a choice. Death is an appointment we must all keep. So we have a very special agenda for this meeting just one item agenda and I will call on the moderator Ralph to continue we'll take just this valedictory session after which the a school will adjourn uh, but let me say here I don't know in case I don't make announcement any longer I don't know whether Anglican Church is still waiting we're to move from here Yes. To Anglican Church. Yes, they're waiting. Still waiting. They're waiting. Actually. So we we'll try and do as fast as possible. Please, if you are to give a tribute, try and make it as short and straight to the point as possible. Like, I learned the church had been waiting for a while. 
uh, thank you and welcome to this special council session. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We will at this point move to the session of um, tributes, brief tributes to this gentleman, and I will start by um, asking the gentleman who is currently occupying the office that he have, the departed gentleman once did, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State, Mr. Moses F. Ekpo, to please proceed. Your Excellency, please. Chairman of Council, Governor of Akwaibum State. I want to thank God for this special session of EXCO, giving honor to whom honor is due. Uh, Chief Ufot Joseph Ekaite made innumerable contributions towards the growth of our state, and of course, the nation as well. So it is fitting that the council should convene and pay this special tribute to a man of honor, a man who had credibility, a man who loved his state, loved his people, and since death must come at one point or the other, we have no option than to thank God for his life. Thank God for Akwaibum State, for Nigeria, for his family, and ask the good Lord to await and receive him and put him squarely on the bosom of Abraham. May the soul of Chief Ufot Joseph Ekaite O F Siebar MNI rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. With His Excellency's permission and direction, we will um, invite the next Sunday from a gentleman who sat in this exco and actually presided over exco some 29 years ago as the first military governor of Akwaibum state of Akwaibum origin, who also worked with this gentleman who was his deputy at the time. We're privileged to have him in our midst. His Excellency, a commander retired. He don't answer the car. Your Excellency, please. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Aquaibum State, the Deputy Governor, please let me stand on the existing uh, protocol. We are gathered uh, here this evening to pay our last tributes of respect to my friend, my brother, and a great gentleman. He may have entered the stage of life some years ago, but uh, for the time that he was, that I met him, we worked together. I think he did his work exceedingly well. But today, the curtain falls, and he has gone through the exit, and I believe he's just going back to eternity from where he let me just say a word to the family of the deceased. There is nothing that we can say today that will remove the clouds of disappointment floating in their mental skies. But I want you to know that it is unto everybody to pass this way. Kings die, beggars die. Rich people die and poor people die. The young die and the old die. In fact, there's something very democratic about death. It is the irreducible denom common denominator to all men. I want to hope that this belief 
will see you through in the trying days ahead. Do realize that death is not the end. It's just a punctuation to take you to eternity. Do realize that also like the seasons that change from the warmth of summer to the chill of winter. Like the ever-flowing river that goes from drought But all through those times, all through those times, the good Lord stands by you. Let this daring faith be a sustaining power in days to come. I thank you for this opportunity. And may I say that the fleet of angels will take my friend, my brother, to eternal rest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I come out of retired in Kanga. At this point, most respectfully, we'll invite His Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibom, who also has a tribute. Your Excellency, please. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor. Your Excellency, the former Governor, distinguished Senators, members of the National Assembly, the Secretary to the State Government, Head of the Civil Service, members of Council in session, our uncles that have joined us in this special Council meeting, sympathizers, permanent secretaries, chairmen of boards and commissions, Service commanders, senior special assistants, special assistants, gentlemen of the press, we all are here to sympathize with the family of our departed elder statesman, led by his dear wife, the children, the entire family. I will say this just an eulogy for his Excellency Chief Ufot Ekaite, CFR MNI. Distinguished Senator Mrs. Eme Ekaite and the entire Kaite family of the corridor in Onalu government area. I want to say here that all Akwaibom people share your pain and grief in the passage to eternity of our Petrarch, Chief Ufot Ekaite. The demise of this beloved elder statesman, an inspiring icon, an astute nationalist, has understandably cast dark clouds over our nation, much like a sunset. When the sun set last night, it did not die. It was rising on some distant shores. Today, as the chief of Forekaite sets on our shores, he rises on those distant shores, joyfully received by an innumerable number of angels to his eternal home. Death to our elder statesman makes little difference. When he was with us, the Lord was with him. Now that his death, he is with the Lord. To those who followed his pilgrimage through life, he has simply cashed a check, I will call it in the bank of eternity to withdraw immortality. I want all of us to be consoled that he fought a good fight, he finished his course, and he kept faith. He once said, I've striven to be on the path of rectitude, justice, equity, and fair play. The duty we owe him 
is to continue in this part of rectitude, justice, and equity, and fair play, and do it by honor him in ways no moment or statue can. Compatriots, when you turn the pages of history, you come across men who left footprints in the sands of time. But on very rare occasions, you come across men and women who towered in their time and became living legends and unifying national moments and monuments. Chief of Arakato was such a man, a man who fits William Shakespeare's moving type. His life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to the world, this was a man. We stand together to grieve and to give thanks at the same time. We grieve because a national monument has fallen and a refreshing inspirational story has ended. We grieve because there has been a death in the Aquibom family. We grieve because we have lost a shining light in a nation in need of illumination, especially at this time. We give thanks because Though he now belongs to the ages, he will live in our folklore's myths and legends. We give thanks because his memory is embalmed in the sacred place of our hearts and stenciled in the tablets of our history as a nation and as a state. We condole the owner community over the demise of this quintessential patriot, distinguished statesman, and I mean a nationalist. Chief who fought Ekaito was only six years old in 1945 when the Second World War ended. Salt was a scarce commodity at that time. It was distributed by the colonial government to our citizens. Aware that those who supervised the distribution of salt gave preference to women with children, his mother used to strap referred to her back in order not to waste time in the long and endless queues. Soon, other women, other women began to borrow the amiable boy to strap him to their backs and get their share of salt. The boy, referred, came to be known in the community as the Salt Baby. It was a fitting name for a boy who would later in life become the salt of a country called Nigeria, in need of administrative and political seasoning. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Chief of Father Kaita brought seasoning to an unsavory nation. He added flavor to public administration. He added spice to our democracy. His journey across the Nigerian landscape instantiated nationalism, patriotism, competence, and integrity. At the different stations of his life, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Honorable Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Principal Private Secretary to the Head of State, Yakubu Gowan, Permanent Secretary in many ministries, Federal, Director General, Directorate, Food, Roads and Rural Infrastructure, Director General in the Ministry of Budget and National Planning, one-time Deputy Governor of Aquibom State, Chairman, Corporate Affairs Commission, the list goes on. He left lasting legacies and typified the acquired virtues of honesty, integrity, competence, and diligence. He was the epitome of administrative excellence and a paragon of integrity in this country. I am tempted to refer to him as an early ambassador of acquired to our nation. But that would be a subtext to a Gatrosian legacy which transcends Aquibom. He rose beyond the Aquibom stratosphere and became a national legend and hero. He was a man for all seasons and became a fortress of hope for our nation. However, there is an Aquibom proverb which says, no matter how high the eagle flies, it stallones keep pointing to the ground. And no matter how high he rose in our nation's political sky, his heart leaned towards Aquibon. Today, in this blessed land of Aquibon, all Aquibomites 
bound by our love for him, especially in this council, and united by our pride in his legacies, stand together to bid him farewell with heavy hearts. His final resting place will remain to all our Kwaibom people the footprint of an angel. May God give us the strength and fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Good night, our elder statesman. We will see you on that glorious morning. Adieu, Papa. Good night. Thank you very much. A fitting end to the session of tributes paid here, of course, by the Deputy Governor, the former Governor, and of course by the current Governor of Aquipum State to this gentleman. At this point, on behalf of the entire Executive Council, His Excellency the Governor will proceed and will pay his respects to the departed gentleman on behalf of the entire ESCO. Thank you very much. Excellency Nangasan Kanga, this way, sir. This way, sir. Thank you, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor. The Excellencies paying their respect to the departed gentleman on behalf of the entire Aquaibom State Executive Council. Your Excellency, please. Your Excellencies, distinguished senators, ladies and gentlemen in this special council this evening. I just uh, felt a little overwhelmed because death has its own influence. Immediately I came in, I just remember that very soon too, I should be laying somebody in this format. And um, I got almost a little bit emotional. You need to understand there's no best time of losing a loved one, no matter what. At any point in time you lose a loved one, it hits your bone marrow. So I can imagine how the family feels. So it's with deep heart, we just have as a people still pray to God to touch them and strengthen them so that we can actually carry these ceremonies to the end. It is our prayer that as we continue with these ceremonies, God will guide each and every one of us. And I want to believe almost on daily basis, activities will be ongoing. And um, we would do everything possible to participate in almost all those activities. And I want to crave the indulgence of the family to also reach out to us as soon as possible that in case there's anything that will have to be done. Uh, this is not an announcement. I also need to point out that on Saturday, from Friday, a whole lot of visitors will come to the state, both within and outside this country. So it's a duty as good Aquaibon people to show love to our departed elder statesman. Please, if you have to show help to somebody who is stranded, do that happily. Because I know even though buses will be provided at the airport and few logistics will be done, anything done by man can never be perfect. 
So where you have to probably fill the gap, do that in a very good style and in a very good manner that can really, really help. But we'll all be on ground to have all the assistance that is needed to have a very smooth lane to rest of our father, our Pentrack, and this elder statesman. I want to thank all of you for this special council and welcome all of you in our usual manner. I will draw this council to a close as I call on all of us to rise and pay a last respect of a minute silence to our departed elder statesman. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. That ends the council sitting. Please, we want to appeal to Her Excellency, distinguished Senator Helena Sene, to pray for the repose of the soul of the disease and also commit the family into God's hands. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. You said in all respect and in everything we should give you thanks. Father, first of all, we thank you for the life of our father, our brother that has passed away. We thank you for the beautiful footprints that he led while he lived. We thank you because so much good has been said about him, about his humility, about his transparency, about his honesty, about his loyalty and selfless service. Our Father and our God, Lord, we pray that, Lord, that you remember him for good. We pray that, Lord, that you receive his spirit and his soul. Let him have rest in your bosom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, he has left us. We grieve, but you said that they that love you should keep your word. And we are praying that we that love him, that we should emulate those good things that he did while he lived. We commit the family into your hands, Lord. You said you will look after the fatherless and be a father to them. You said you will be a husband to the widow. Our Father and our God, Lord, these are special children now to you. Mighty Jehovah, let your angels tabernacle around them by day and by night and bring them safety and bring them provision, bring them comfort when they need it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit the entire funeral rites, the procession, all that will be all those that will be coming. We ask for journey mercies, O oh God. It shall not be said they came for this funeral and this. We shall not hear any evil report in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them the strength. Give them the wisdom. Give them the, 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 the peace of mind to do whatever needs to be done. And we commit everything to your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. This is the beginning of the funeral rites and it's going to continue like this till um, Saturday, we commit all the activities, we commit all the visitations, we commit everything that will be done unto you. We said, take eminence and go ahead of us. Make all the crooked paths to be straight, O Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Please, just so we know, after the national anthem, we'll all remain where we are. The caskets will be the first to be carried out of the chambers, and the rest of us will follow. Having come to the end of this session, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will join in singing the national anthem.
Thank you very much. Let's make way for the Paul Bearers, please. Careful, please. 